Yes, at this point, I would like to apologise to every frog, toad and newt out there because we've been going for two weeks now and we have neglected you. But that is all about to change because, Lucy, you are an amphibian fanatic. That's right. Thank you for that apology, Yolo. <laughs> because, yes, I love amphibians and they rarely get the attention they deserve, which is a shame because globally they are suffering from catastrophic declines. A few years ago, I spent six months travelling around South America investigating the plight of some of the world's most exotic species. But my first love, of course, are British amphibians and they've had a tough start to 2018. Yeah, they certainly have and it's... Uh... It's the weather again, I'm afraid. A few days ago, I told you how the weather had affected some of our breeding owls, but it's also hit amphibians badly. January was unseasonally mild, and that encouraged a lot of amphibians, particularly the common frog, to come out of hibernation and to work their way to our ponds. And then the beast from the east hit. Thousands of ponds across the country were frozen solid. Not, not for days, but sometimes for a week or more. Now, this is a photograph sent in by John Walters of 30 male frogs that he found dead in his pond. And John says he tried everything he could, breaking the ice constantly, but unfortunately, it was so cold for so long, there was nothing he could do. And that was replicated right across the country. Let me show you this graph sent in by Frog Life. And this shows the number of reports of uh, dead frogs, winter kill amphibians, mainly frogs to them. And you'll see that in 2018, it was almost double any other year. The worst year before that was 2015. It's tragic, yes, but it's not quite a disaster because frogs and toads, considering they're so small, are quite long lived. A frog on average will live for about eight years, a toad, for maybe 12 years so they can put up with the occasional bad season but if you have a succession of poor years then that's when we might see the population badly hit absolutely and it's been a few months since march's harsh weather but i wanted to see how sherborne's amphibians had been affected so yesterday afternoon i got to do something i love tadpole hunting Meadows, which is a patch of wetlands down by the Windrush River, because I think that that's going to be the best place for me to find my favourite animals, which are toads, frogs and newts. Oh yes, score already. There are thousands of gorgeous fat tadpoles in this stream, and I reckon it probably leads to a bigger pond where there'll be more. Fantastic, we have. We've got loads of tadpoles here, quite young, very early stages of development. There's no chance of me finding the adults about, not in the pond, because they will have already left, whether they're toads or frogs, breeding has taken place, and so they will have left the pond. So they've only got the tadpoles themselves as a clue, but I'm a little bit confused as to what kind of tadpole they are. They look like toad tadpoles, but this pond would seem to me like perfect frog habitat because frogs, Latin name, the common frog, is rana temporaria. Temporaria means temporary. Frogs like temporary pools of water that tend to dry up. Whereas toads, they like deeper water, more permanent bodies of water. They have ancestral ponds that they go back to year after year. So I think what is required to take these guys back to the macro lab for further inspection. And here they are. They were indeed toad tadpoles. They're quite hard to tell apart, but there was a bit of a clue as I left the pond because I spotted some fish in there. Now, of course, fish don't eat tadpoles because they're toad tadpoles because they're toxic. Um, so if you put a fish in here, it would leave them alone. That's why toads can afford to spawn in deep ponds with fish. Um, but it was unusual to find toads so poorly developed at this time of year, which makes me think that Sherborne's amphibians were confused by our weird weather. But Springwatch researchers 
did find other toad tadpoles in different stages of development, which we've got some amazing macro shots of. Now, metamorphosis is always just such an amazing thing to watch. Look at there, you can see the legs coming through and obviously the tail, that, that'll get absorbed into the body. They, those are the external changes, but internally, there's like masses and masses of changes going on. The organs are going to be completely changed and realigned. And there's, look, you can see here an arm just trying to make its way out. These animals really are shapeshifters. They change from aquatic swimming vegetarians to air breathing, land crawling carnivores, all in just eight to 12 weeks. And when you have toadlets, they, they will appear at this time of year on warm June nights. They'll emerge en masse in their thousands. And of course, there's safety in numbers, but still only 5% of those toadlets that emerge will actually survive to sexual maturity and return to their ancestral pond to breed. Which isn't very many, is it? No, that is incredible, actually. And, and of course, what's interesting is that this harsh winter didn't affect toads anywhere near as much as it affected frogs. And mm. two main reasons for that, we believe. First of all, of course, toads emerge much later. And also, they're like, as you said, the, the bigger, deeper ponds so they don't freeze over quite as often, and there's a lot more oxygen in there. But despite that, in the last 30 years, toads have declined by 68%. So please, do what you can to help amphibians. Dig a garden, dig, dig a pond in your garden, let some areas go wild. That really will be a massive help. Now, as if the bad winter wasn't enough, amphibians appear on the menu of a lot of our wildlife. As cameraman Richard Taylor-Jones found out, at a very unusual location. 